Welcome to our MA Web Center's bi-weekly webinar series. I'm excited for tonight's event. It's going to be jam-packed with a ton of information on social media. Um, as you guys know, social media has completely changed how we do business and how we interact socially um, in the world today. And so if we want to be relevant as business owners, we really, really need to understand not only um, what is available to us regarding social media, but how to best use each platform because the platforms really and truly are very different. So understanding the differences between the different platforms and what you should be doing as web center owners to take advantage of these um, is going to be pivotal to your success in implementing profiles on these multiple platforms. So I'm really, really excited. But before we get into uh, what's covering what we're covering tonight, let me just remind everybody that next webinar will be on Tuesday, April 2nd. 2013. It's the exact same link that you used to register for tonight. Um, this is a bi-weekly webinar series, and um, you can expect a, an MA Web Center's webinar, live webinar, on the first and third Tuesday of every month. All right. Um, if during the presentation you have any specific questions, go ahead and send it in the chat box below. Just so you know, I won't be reading those questions until the end of the webinar. So um, uh, just you know, be patient. It's just one person conducting it. Um, these webinars are recorded and they are being uploaded to mawc411.com. If you click on training and support and scroll down to webinars, you can see all of the webinars that were recorded and uploaded there. Um, the weekly webinar topics are always announced the day of um, on our MA Web Centers Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash official MA Web Centers. Um, so if, you know, on April 2nd, if you're wondering what we're going to be covering that night, just make sure you're a fan of us on Facebook and you can check it out and see the announcement there. Um, another uh, a reminder is this Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Jeremy Finema and I will be conducting a meet on session. Um, so a meet on is is basically a live broadcast where we're going to be giving an overview of the Web Center program along with announcing some really cool new things that are coming to the program. So we're really, really excited uh, for this announcement. It's a great uh, session to get your web center owner prospects onto. If you have anybody that's considering majoring in web centers and wants to know more about the program and what the program has to offer, make sure that they join the meet on session on uh, Thursday. So if you go to meeton.com, you can see it on the schedule there. So let's talk about what you can expect for tonight. Um, we're going to start with a very basic overview of social media in general. I want to give you a foundational understanding of really how much social media has rocked our world in the past um, really few years. So I want to give you a little bit about that. Then we're going to talk a little bit about online personal branding, what your goals for using social media should be, and some very basic rules that regardless of what, which platform we're going to be talking about, that you really should be following. Um, because, again, we want to make sure that we're using social media to get results, not just for the sake of being busy. So uh, these are just some of my golden rules. Then we're going to actually take some time and go through the top five um, most popular social media flat platforms that are out there today. Um, and I'm going to tell you what they do, um, what I recommend that you do on them and uh, you know, suggested things that you can share on these particular platforms and how you can get started using them. So we're going to take you through Facebook and then through Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, LinkedIn, and then we're going to finish off with a, a, a different kind of social platform, which is blogging. And I want to talk to you about the power of blogging. Um, then you might be wondering to yourself, this is really great, and you're going to see lots of examples of things that you can post on all of these platforms, but I want to give you some clear ideas for where you can find some really great shareable content that you can be posting on your own personal and business pages. Um, and again, the point of using social media is so that you can um, start a conversation, so you can open the door, so you can lead to an appointment or lead to a sale or lead to a new business partner. That's, that's going to be the goal of the conversation tonight. So one of the most important things that you can do for yourself is you can have a place to send your prospects so you can tie it all up and tie it all nicely together in a neatly uh, bound package. So we're going to talk about how you can maximize your follow-up and maximize your social media use with by, by leveraging the distributor recruiting sites. So I'm going to talk to you about how to tie those two together. Um, Ryan and I have been doing that uh, like nonstop for the past couple of months, and we've had tremendous success. It's the reason we even have an 004 open right now. Um, also, I just watched <laughs> uh, Market Hong Kong's Web Center presentation, 
And they do a ton with, with uh, the distributor recruiting sites and social media as well. And so the people that are using the DRS sites properly um, and really are using them in sync with social media are the ones that are seeing really great results. So I want to talk to you about that tonight. I want to just give you a really brief overview about what MA Web Centers is also doing for your clients' social media platforms and a nice brief summary at the very end to wrap it up so that it feels like something you can put into work as early as tomorrow. All right, so let's get into it. Basic social networking statistics. These are these are statistics that have been published. Um, I, I believe that Steve and Lauren actually shared these with you guys at MA World Conference. Um, but they're really, I mean, as much as we know social media has taken the country or the world even by storm, I still find that these are pretty pretty surprising numbers. So 62% of adults worldwide are now using social media. And I dare to say that in North America um, and other uh, uh countries, it's even way higher than that. This is a worldwide statistic. 79% of online shoppers spend 50% of their online shopping time researching products. Just think about yourself. The last time you went to purchase something either online or even in a store, did you not first go to shop.com or to uh, research the product first and to compare quality and compare pricing and all that other stuff? Um, consumers have always been um, generally, you know, they had a specific level of education or they, they wanted they wanted information. They did some comparing. They asked what people thought, but they were very much limited by time, right? 20 years ago, if you wanted to compare, um, you know, vacuum cleaners, you basically went to Sears or some box store and you compared whatever they happened to have in their building. Or you maybe called a friend or two and you asked them what they thought. But that was really what you were limited to without having to invest, you know, tons and tons of time. But now, today, consumers are more educated than ever because of the internet, because we can research products online, right? 53% of social media people follow a brand, meaning they, uh, you and I are great examples of that. So if you're on Twitter, you're probably following your favorite, you know, uh, shoe designer or your favorite uh, Southwest Airlines or, you know, uh, Motives Cosmetics or some brand that you like. 47% acquired new customers online because of Twitter. So what does this tell you about online shopping? It tells you that consumers expect to be able to research their products. They expect and they follow specific brands because they, they want to be um, in the loop. They want to be in the know about what's going on with products. So what does that mean for us? Well, as internet entrepreneurs and shop.com, it's just a no brainer that we should be leveraging social media. But as web center owners, it also says a lot about our clients, our retail clients, right? Any of um, our clients that have online stores or even restaurants or even, you know, service providers, they need to be having um, a nice not just not just an online um, brochure, but they need to have a website that's going to allow their um, potential clients to research them and to read online reviews and to, to learn more about them. Um, so it's really nice as web center owners to be able to provide the opportunity for local businesses, small to medium sized businesses to be able to participate in this social ne networking storm. More, more stats for you. Social commerce sales are expected to climb $14.35 billion in 2013 and $30 billion in 2015. 167 million people will shop online this year, and 192 million people by 2016 will be spending an average of $1,800 per year online. Again, that's just showing you that people are actively shopping online. We're not going to change this. And as web center owners, we need to where we need to know that there is a market, that there are businesses that are in need of the services and the products that we provide. 40% of Twitter users regularly search products via Twitter. I do it all the time. 32% of consumers have purchased product online because of info found on Twitter right? 60%, I love this, are willing to post products on Facebook if they get a special deal or discount. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a friend go, um, you know, check out uh, if they want like a deal from Sneak Away or if they want a chance to win a free t-shirt or uh, a free product bag or a, or a gift certificate or whatever, they'll post something. And that's just basically some company incentivizing people to let their products go viral, right? 83% of shoppers enjoy sharing and want to share about their purchases online. So when I buy things, I am always posting them. If I buy a new pair of shoes from a partner store, or my one of my favorite stores to shop at is ASOS. They're another partner store with shop.com, and I buy it's a great um, fashion store in Europe. 
in, in the UK and I shop there a lot. And so when I buy things from there, I'm sharing it on, on online. So, you know, very much it's word of mouth advertising. A couple of interesting stats for you. 56% of people have used social media to spy on partners. Why is that important? Well, if you are, if we are in business and, and our business nature is networking and we need to expand um, our business with two qualified individuals, do we want to post things that are going to attract quality individuals to our business to ask us about it or otherwise, right? It's interesting to know that that many people are using it to basically, you know, spy on their partners. IRS tracks you and what you're doing through social media. So make sure that you're working. Um, on Twitter, we get excited if we see someone follows us, but in real life, it's kind of creepy, right? Um, women behave more cautiously than men on social media. Just a couple of fun facts. So the goal of using these social media platforms is to create interest in yourself or in a product or in a brand or in your business or in yourself in general, right? And to start some conversations and to also reply to conversations that are already happening, meaning, um, if people are complaining about their job or if they're saying how much they love their vacation or they wish they could spend more time with their family or um, they just started a new business and uh, everybody should come check out my new business. You know, are you listening, right? Are you responding if someone says that they wish they could take more vacations? If someone says that they just started a new business, are you responding and saying, well, that's great. Have you thought about a website yet? Right. You need to be using social media not only to generate interest in your own products and services, but also to be listening about what other people deem as important or interesting to them and start and get into conversations because it's networking business. We are a networking business by nature. And guess what? Social media is really what? Social networking. It's just a more efficient way to do network marketing. All right. So take a look at what socializing in real life face FaceTime looks like now offline. Even when people get together, they're on their phones, they're checking things out, they're showing each other videos, they're taking pictures and posting them on Facebook, right? Just today, Jim Winkler walked in the door and we had a quick little meeting about some ideas for some workshops that we're going to be incorporating. And um, we took a picture and we posted it on Facebook. You know, that's what people do. It's totally normal for people to do that or for you to whip out your iPhone and to show or your Android or whatever and show somebody a video of something that you like, right? Or, or a product. That is what, this is how people connect right now. Social media is the new word of mouth advertising. So as web center owners, um, you know, really we're consulting and, and talking to business owners about their business, right? So one of the things that we'll ask, you know, that we'll get, that we used to get as an objection is, well, I get all my business via word of mouth advertising. Well, that's what social media is. Social media is word of mouth advertising. We have a product for that. People share on, on social media what they like. They share what they don't like. They share what they're currently doing. They share what they want. They, they interact 24 seven. Um, the other night I posted something, my Grant Cardone bracelet. I think I posted it at like, I didn't even know, 11.30 PM. And by the time I woke up at like six in the morning, there were 30 something likes on it. And it was, um, and it was so funny. I'm like, wow, that happened between basically midnight and six o'clock in the morning. People are online all the time. So the question is, are you taking advantage of that for yourself? Are you plugging in? Do you have um, the kind of online profile that properly represents you, right? Are you, do you have the kind of online profile that's going to support you in your personal and business goals? Or are you just kind of online, right? So let's just talk about how you can effectively be online. So number one, you have to, you have to consider personal branding. All right. So again, create an online profile for yourself. And in some cases, you might want to consider creating an online profile for your web center business. And I'm going to give you a specific idea for doing that specifically with blogs and um, with Facebook. And if you're a new web center owner, you wouldn't need to create a profile for your web center business. This is a more advanced uh, social media networking technique that I'm going to talk a little bit about tonight. Um, have a solution to close the deal. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And here's another really important thing about your personal branding. Keep it clean and be choosy about what you post. Meaning, um, when, when, you, when you choose to brand yourself on social media, um, make sure that number one, it's a great depiction of who you are, but also that it's a positive depiction of who you are. Um, so if you have any people tagging you in old, great college photos when you were doing keg stands, you might want to delete those or untag yourself. 
remember, your online profile represents you just as much as you represent yourself in real life. Because like I said in the previous slide, this is how people interact. It's no different, right? People that find you on Facebook, they, they read about you and they might be checking you out and seeing, um, seeing what they think about you. And based on your profile, they're going to make a judgment about whether they like you or not. Um, just a little while ago, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Just a little while ago, I sold um, a musical instrument on eBay to a couple in Florida for their son, their 17-year-old son. And um, the, the mother was an attorney and she legit looked me up on Facebook, checked my profile out to see if I was a real person and if I was the kind of person she would want to do business with. Um, so keep it clean and be choosy about what you pro what you post. Another big rule is to complete your profiles. Regardless of which platform we're talking about, you want to make sure that you have a great profile picture, right? Don't pick, don't put random pictures of cartoons or bacon or just random things. Um, people do the craziest things for their profile picture. You want to have a nice picture of yourself, okay? Um, make sure that you're writing your interests and your about us section, that what you do. Um, and that overall you're being yourself. It's a great overall look at who you are. Basically, your Facebook pr profile is kind of like your representative. Your Twitter um, handle is kind of like your representative. And you want to make sure that your representative is actually representing you. All right. And before we get into the specific profiles that I want to talk about tonight, let's talk about some very important social media rules. Okay. Number one, be yourself. All right. In this business, we buy people more than we buy anything, right? We, we, we get to choose who we work with and that's a really, really special thing. And, um, and you know, corporate America, they don't get to do that. Most companies and organizations, you don't get to do that. Be yourself, be someone that uh, you would want to work with. Don't spam people. Spamming, um, what I mean by that is don't just like copy and paste links on people's um, walls, things like that. Don't be impersonal. Um, this is a one-to-one -one marketing business, and social networking sites are there to just make you more efficient. That doesn't mean that it takes out the need to be personal. It doesn't – just because you're being more efficient doesn't mean that you don't have to care about who's at the other end of the table anymore. It's just that instead of you having to, like, literally sit at a Starbucks all day and meet one person every hour, you get to sit in front of your computer and reconnect with people or find – and search for really great prospects. You get to do all kinds of things like that, but you shouldn't spam people. You still have to, you know, be one to one. Um, right along those lines are no mass messaging. Um, mass messaging doesn't work. I know that we think that we're um, doing our business a service when we mass message everybody on our friends list that we've now started a web center business. And if you know anybody who needs a website, keep me in mind. But the truth of the matter is, is that that's annoying for people that receive those messages. And, um, and then whenever anybody responds, everybody has to see it. It's just not, it's not a warm and fuzzy kind of a thing. Um, and, and again, it's, it's a common error that distributors and web center owners make where they think that they're saving time and they think that they're like, they've figured out some like, you know, golden ticket to prospecting faster. But the truth is, is that you're not going to get hardly any results, if any at all. And um, you're mostly just going to annoy people. When you make posts, keep it short and sweet. Okay, so uh, we'll talk specifically about different things. But like, you know, one of the really great things about Twitter is they limit how many characters you can use. Um, and, and I think that that's such a great thing because people don't read more than a certain amount of characters anyway. I don't know about you guys, but when people post these like rants on Facebook or these huge paragraphs of whatever's going on, I never read them because nobody has time. People um, on social media are generally using a mobile device when they're on a social media platform. So um, they generally want it to load quickly and they want to be able to scan through it quickly. So keep your text um, as minimalized as possible. Again, along those lines, keep it visual and media rich. So I, I believe in any way possible that you can accompany um, text with a picture or a video or a link, always do that. In fact, Facebook last week just had a huge um, uh, release of the new version of Facebook, and, and they believe that it needs to be visual and media rich as well. And so they're starting to do things to force people's posts to be more media rich. So if you say that you're out to eat at a specific restaurant, then um, a picture of the restaurant and the map, you know, the Google map location will pop up whether or not you put it there or not, which is kind of nice. Um, share stories, word of mouth, advertising. So this is another common um, 
mistake that web center owners and distributors in general make. We try to sell ourselves and sell things online uh, or on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or any of these products or uh, platforms that we're going to be talking about tonight. So the important thing is that your, um, you asking people to buy something is not going to sell a product. All right. It's not going to sell a service. It's not going to sell somebody on giving you a website referral. What you should do instead is share a story or share content that's going to generate interest and start a conversation so that they'll want to make that referral or want to buy something or want to get more information from you. Remember how we sell products in real life and then emulate that in social media. The 80-20 rule for personal profiles. So uh, this is obviously with exception to business profiles, but with personal profiles that you set up, I highly believe in the 80-20 rule, meaning 80% of what you post should be personal things, lifestyle things, things that you're enjoying doing, things you're doing with your friends and family, um, uh, that kind of stuff, clothes that you like or whatever, just things that, things that are about you. If you're playing a sport, you play a sports team or whatever, you know, post personal things. And 20% can be business related. And the reason is, is because, again, we are an opportunity for um, uh, people to start a business part time and, and generate a six figure income. And if they see and people will Facebook stalk you, I showed you the statistics earlier. Um, if your prospects see that um, all of your social media is just plastered in business. Uh, does that sound like something that they want to do with their life? It sounds overwhelming. It sounds like way too much and way too involved for something that would be attractive. So number one, you're going to intimidate your prospects. And number two, you're going to alienate people. And that's not what you want. You don't want to alienate your people. All right. Share content instead that generates interest and calls to action. So right now um, I'm fighting a little bit of a cold. I'm in Greensboro and there must be mold in this hotel or something. And, and, and I don't know, things are compromised. So I'm drinking a ton of aloe. And on Twitter today, um, I posted a picture of me drinking aloe. And I said, gosh, I'm feeling a little under the weather, but God, I love my aloe. And I just left it at that. And so and at that point, someone goes, who drinks aloe? Because most people don't know that aloe is consumable and they think of it only for sunburns and it starts a conversation. And you can see where I'm going with that. Search and respond. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But just understand this. Social media doesn't have to be only for uh, cultivating relationships with people that you know. It can also be a place for you to meet new people that are in the market for websites or that are in the market for business solutions, uh, ways to grow their business or marketing or web marketing or social media or all these things. You are, we do business with people every day. We become fans of restaurants and lawyers and, and business providers in our area on Facebook and on Twitter and on blogs and all of that stuff. So if we're if we're friends with people that we're doing business with or business owners that we know, um, and, and and we're searching out the people that we do business with or people that are, do business in our area that we don't know, these are great ways to get to meet new prospects um, in our area, build relationships, and set appointments. So let's get started with the specific platforms. The first one I want to talk about is probably the most popular one, um, Facebook. Almost everybody has Facebook, right? It has 200 million unique visitors per month and uh, 1 billion active users. And the average user has 130 friends. That, that is incredible. So basically picture this. If, you're, if, if anybody's been to a major event, you sit down or you go on stage and you look at everybody in the arena and there's 20,000 people there. Chances are, I'd say at least 98, especially in that room, it's all internet entrepreneurs, have Facebook profiles and each of them know at least 130 people. What's 20,000 times 130, right? The thing is think about how many people are, are at your are at your fingertips. 72% of B2C companies acquired customers on Facebook. 43% of B2B acquired customers. Now, B2, uh, B2C is uh, business to consumer, like um, a, a company that sells products directly to companies, and B2B is business to business. So Web Centers very much is a B2B business, right? We are a business that sells to other businesses. So we would fall in the number four category as Web Center owners. Now, Motives Cosmetics and Allo and, and other products that we like to use are more like B2C businesses. We sell to consumers, to our, our own personal customers, our preferred customers, right? So just look at the stats for what you can accomplish sales-wise 
if you use Facebook the right way. 72% of B2C companies acquired customers from Facebook. 43% of B2B acquired customers. The chances are pretty good, right? 80% of social media users prefer to connect to their favorite brand using Facebook. And it's true. Facebook is, is the granddaddy of it all um, and has done a great job. So um, step one, we talked about personal branding. So I want to show you both. I'm going to give you some different uh, profiles to check out. This one is mine. This is my husband's, right? So on mine, you can see there's a profile picture. Um, this this cover photo that I that I chose gener that shows some of my interests. I'm a, I'm a dance instructor as well as an entrepreneur. So you can see that I like that. That I like the outdoors. I love nature. I love dance. Um, right over here, you can see what I do. It says field development executive for MA Web Centers. Um, studied music and performing arts at the University of Massachusetts, lives in Massachusetts, married to Ryan P. Stack. And if you click on About Us, it talks all about my web center business, shop.com. It talks about um, my friend that I am you know, a mother, a wife, and a friend, all of the things that are important to me. When you click on my About Me section, it's complete. When you look at all of the things that I do and all of my um, entrepreneurial interests and my personal interests, you have a very clear idea of who I am and what I like to do, right? Ryan's is the same way. Great picture of him and us. And this is actually at the World Conference at Hard Rock Cafe. We were watching Conquer perform. Um, and the same thing, his profile is complete. Now, one of the things that you can do with Facebook is create interest. So I want to talk to you about three different kinds of interest that you could be generating and different ways to do it. So let me just, uh, we talked a little bit about not selling on Facebook, right? Don't sell your product, don't sell your business, don't sell your websites on Facebook. But instead, what you want to do is generate interest. So rather than me taking a picture of my nails that I did and saying, um, or, or excuse me, me making a post on Facebook and saying, I love Motive's uh, nail lacquer, the new colors are really awesome, you should buy it here. What I did was I took a picture of the nails that I had just done, it was me holding my favorite coffee mug and my little custom-made coffee sleeve, and I posted it with just a little morning coffee and a little heart because that's who I am and that's what I would do. And it generated a ton of likes right away. And, and then it said, good morning, lovely, enjoy the coffee. P.S. It's nighttime here in Australia. And P.S. number two, I love your nails with the heart. Cool. Hey, Kitty, how are you? How's Australia? By the way, it's Motive's Nail Lacquer. You see what I mean? Instead of me just posting a random thing about nail lacquer is awesome and you should buy it, I, I used a picture and um, and clearly one of the things that stands out is that my nails are different, right, than most most manicures. Ryan, instead of Ryan posting, um, I have a really great business opportunity um, that you can earn a lot of money. If you're interested, send me a message. That's something that I see all the time. It's crazy um, that people, they, they post them. And again, very well-intentioned posts. People think that they're going to you know, they, we are so excited about our businesses because we understand the asset that we have, right? So we post these very general um, things about our opportunity that is in a language that most people don't understand. So when you say things like, I've got a great business opportunity, you should message me for details, that is weird. That doesn't, that doesn't translate well. It doesn't communicate well. So instead, use a picture. Use something else to catch somebody's attention. So here's Ryan with a picture of Ethan. This was yesterday. And it said, working at Starbucks with my little man. And it was taken in like the middle of the day. So it's funny. This actually uh, did result in random private messages going, "Where? why are you at Starbucks at noon on a Monday? <laughs> so again, there's different ways to create interest. There's ways that create likes and comments and questions. And then, there, and then um, pictures are really great. Um, and videos are great, media-rich kinds of things. Share stories. I love this. So this is Josh Wagner. He's one of our uh, big business builders in my personal group. And, um, you know, in my, a lot of, a lot of text, but, you know, it, it was accompanied with a picture. So he gets a free pass. It says, the checks are getting bigger and they're coming in faster every single month. I just received the $900 check. Over the last four weeks, I will make $1,800 working part-time from home. What would an extra $1,800 a month do for you and your family? Uh, next week, I'll be completing my first full year at the home-based business. It's awesome to be working with friends and creating residual income that will pay us our families forever. And then he posted a picture of the check. He also, you know, uh, blacked out his um, address because you don't want to be doing that. And he posted it to Facebook. So, again, normally Josh doesn't post this much text, but because this was kind of like a monumental thing for him, I think he just got a little bit more um, into it. So I, I, I blacked out the people 
that, uh, you know, are friends and prospects of Josh because I just didn't want to be weird about that. But take a look at the the comments that this check generated. Hey there, I am related to you. Will this affect me in any way? Josh, how are we related again? It's his sister. Um, always a joker. Great job. Yep, great job. Very proud of you, Joshy Poo. I believe we have the same last name. Um, and then Ryan says something. Yeah, buddy. And then it starts getting uh, to how long have you been working for Market America again? So it's funny. So these two people um, that are related to Josh knew he was doing the business. The timing wasn't really right to show them the plan at the time because they kind of wanted to see him earn money first. We all have prospects like that. And this is a great way to show them that you're earning that money and for them to get involved and to show support for you and to actually start asking questions. And again, how long have you been doing that again? You start getting all of these curious questions that, that open the door to future conversations. This is more specific to web centers. This is Erin Smith. She's an awesome fast tracker on uh, with web center owner and fast tracker. So I, I um, blacked out all of her people's names, but you know, proud to, to say Erin is great. She, she posted, well, I'm in disbelief. I literally just made $1,200 in just one week. Woohoo! I can stay at home with my kids and still make good money. Smiley face. So that was really cool. Again, Erin could have easily said, I've got a really great opportunity for you to earn a ton uh, over $1,000 and work from home and stay home with your kids. Message me for details, which is what the average distributor would post. Erin instead shared a story. I just made $1,200 in one week. Woohoo, I can stay at home with my kids and still make good money. And you can see by her little smiley faces and I am in disbelief, I literally just made, woohoo, like this is her being her. She did this completely perfectly, sharing that she had just made all of this money. So what is your secret? Yeah, what are you doing? Go, Erin. Awesome. That we do not have to give up a great income for our family. I agree. Disbelief. So thrilled. Tell me too. I'm dying to stay at home. You see what I mean, you guys? There's things that generate interest that lead to conversations, and there's things that alienate prospects. You want to go with the things that are going to generate interest. Now, these are personal pages. So we talked about personal pages and the 80-20 rule, right? So, uh, you know, 80% fa uh, family, friends, personal lifestyle kind of things, and 20% business. Now, if you want to have a, a presence on Facebook just for your web center business, you can do that. This is mine. Um, this, I only dedicate what I put on this page to web center related content. So right here, I have a logo. You should create your own logo. You don't want to copy mine. You want to have your own logo. That's your own web center name. You know, I, I made a custom uh, uh, cover photo, but you could also use the MA web centers one for your own uh, business page if you'd like to. All you have to do is go to the official MA web centers Facebook page. You could save their cover photo and use it for your own. Or you could create one. It's up to you. Um, and you can use this as a place to promote your web center business, right? You can occasionally share business updates on your personal page from here. And what's really cool about doing that is if I were to share my new reality web solutions design center concept on my personal page right here, then it's branding me personally as an industry professional. It's letting people know that I do web centers and here's my web center Facebook page. Does that make sense, you guys? It's it's really great opportunity for branding. And again, this won't really be relevant for people using the simple sales approach so much. In fact, people using the simple sales approach should not create business pages for their Facebook. But for those of you looking for a way to take it to the next level, this can be incredibly effective. Um, <coughs> We're going to talk about some places to get some great shareable content in a little bit. But, you know, basically you could be sharing design center samples from the design center from our Facebook page, um, or excuse me, MA Web Center's Facebook page or masamples.com. We'll go over more specifically later, um, but you can share all kinds of great stuff that's shareable here. So um, what's really cool about this too is a lot of our clients are fans of us on our Facebook and um, they're seeing the designs pop through and they see us like doing all these really great work and working with all these new people. And it helps them to know that we're still in business and that we're still doing beautiful work and that they should send us referrals. We literally just got a message from one of our clients saying, um, oh, by the way, um, my, this, it was an, a specific community organization needs a website. And they sent us a private message um, right here through our business Facebook page, which, by the way, I love. I love having my clients being a fan of our business instead of a friend of mine on my personal page. It just I like keeping those two things a little bit separate. So we're going to switch gears. We're going to move on to Twitter. 
Um, I love Twitter. I think Twitter is like, in in my opinion, going to be the next biggest thing. It's going to be way bigger than Facebook. It's way better monetized, and um, and I love it. So, um, Twitter. The average Twitter has 126 followers. Over 40% of users on Twitter never tweet anything. That's kind of weird. 53% of tweets are product recommendations. Um, over a billion tweets every 72 hours. And 39% of marketers have generated leads on Twitter. So this is that B2B stuff that we were talking about. So personal branding. Again, you want to have a picture. You want to have a nice cover photo. And you can even update the background photo on your Twitter excuse me, as well. And right over here, what's really nice about the new Twitter is that um, the the picture and your name and your Twitter handle, like his is at the Stack Life, um, right below that, it tells you a quick um, overview of who this person is. So he's a father, husband, internet entrepreneur, dreamer, educator, mentor, taking massive action and leading from the front to create your own economy. And then he writes where he's from and he wrote our website, the stackgrp.com. So if somebody follows him or if somebody is, and we're going to talk more about how to tweet effectively, they know a lot about him right away just by getting to that homepage. This one is mine. My picture, these are my girls. That's my handle at Sarah Rose Stack. I'm a singer, songwriter, dancer, designer, creator, wife, mother, friend, and here's my business, New Reality Web Solutions. There's my website. Same exact thing. So what should you be doing on Twitter? Well, there's a number of things that you should be doing on Twitter. Same same uh, situation as Facebook where you want to be creating interest in yourself and sharing stories. Um, but you also want to be more viral. You want to tag people. You want to hashtag and you want to retweet. So we're going to talk about what these things mean. So the first tweet I want you to look at is Ryan's. It says, why should you build passive income? Um, what does it buy you? It gives you freedom. Enjoying time with my little guy. And there's actually a picture of uh, him and Ethan at Starbucks. It's the same picture that he put on Facebook right? So that created some really cool interest and he used a picture. That was really nice. He shared a quick story. Um, Josh Wagner, hashtag, there's a difference between winners and quitters. Winners never quit and quitters never win. And then he tags the stack life, uh, Sean Gaff, Eric Mancini, and Von Lip. Now this was really cool because um, this is this is a hashtag that was trending. There's a difference between, and then he did something entrepreneurial. And when he tagged Ryan and Sean and Eric and Vaughn, it showed up on all of their Twitter pages as well. So this tweet not only went out to all of his followers, but also to all of the followers of the people that he tagged. Then you can see right below here that it was retweeted by Ryan Stack. Um, retweeting is is a great way to uh, show something that you like. So I retweeted Dwayne McLaughlin. Dwayne McLaughlin, uh, he's at Dwayne McLaughlin. He does a motivation of the day. And his was, you can stand tall without standing on someone. You can be a victor without having victims by Harriet Woods. And I just thought that was so beautiful and so brilliant. So I retweeted it this morning. So when you retweet something, um, it shows up on your Twitter page and um, you can see who it came from originally. So think about this. Um, if you didn't know, if you were one of my followers on Twitter, let me go back for a second. If you were one of my 354 followers and you did not know who Dwayne McLaughlin was, now you do because I just retweeted something that he said and it didn't just um, copy and paste what I liked from what he said. It also included his picture and the link to his Twitter page. So you can see how quickly that can become viral, right? And then there I am. I love my aloe. Hashtag wellness care picture of myself with the yellow, or actually it was just my desk with the yellow. Now, tagging people, to tag someone, you do an at symbol and then their name, their Twitter name or their Twitter handle, excuse me. To hashtag, it's like the pound sign, and then you can you could pick something. Hashtags are really important because hashtags um uh, you can you can you can look up what's trending and hashtags are, are, are can uh, represent something or an interest. So if I was a web, if I'm a web center owner and I'm talking about, you know, um, some new design that I'm letting go out. One of the things I could do is say, check out this beautiful new design, hashtag web marketing, hashtag web design, hashtag winning or something like that. When somebody, when somebody is searching for web marketing people or, um, uh, social media, or if they're searching for winning, my tweet will show up in their search results because I hashtagged it. All right. When uh, and again, you want to be retweeting stuff and you want to do things that other people would want to retweet because that just makes you um, visible to more people. So I know that this can seem a little bit overwhelming. Um, Twitter is 
in my opinion, I don't know why, but when people sign up for Facebook, they generally just dive right in and they figure it out. But with Twitter, they tend to wait a little while. They create a profile and they take a little bit too much time to get really into it. So I highly recommend um, that you figure this out. And luckily today, actually, Mark in America's blog has an article that's a Twitter tutorial. Uh, so if you go to blog.marketamerica.com, it might be two or three articles down at this point, but you can see they teach you where to find the hashtags, how to connect with people, how to search for people, how to find friends, um, business uh, to, to browse different categories. Now we talked about how social media can be a great way to interact with people that you know, but if you check out this tutorial and if you really take advantage of the hashtagging and retweeting and finding new prospects on, on Twitter, it can actually expand your web center and your Market America names list way more than you even thought you could. We're gonna switch over to Pinterest. Pinterest is another one of my most, actually Pinterest is probably one of my favorite things to play with. Um, Pinterest is the third most popular social media site, right behind Twitter and Facebook in the USA. It's 60% female. Pins without prices are twice as likely to be repinned than pins with prices. I'll tell you what that means in a little bit. The average time on Pinterest is 14.2 minutes, meaning the average user is on Pinterest for almost, you know, for about 14 minutes. And um, Pinterest is expected to account for 35% of social media driven purchases. Now, this is really, really important because um, it's a very, very visual driven thing. But in my opinion, this Pinterest has the biggest opportunity to be the most monetized. It makes the most sense for a business owner to be leveraging Pinterest. So as web center owners, we should be leveraging this. Our web center clients should be leveraging this. Um, it's, it's incredible. Let me show you a little bit about what it's, what it's like. So again, Pinterest personal branding, have your name, who you are, a little bit about you. It says artist, entrepreneur, dancer, mother, wife, friend. Great. Then, oh, good Lord. My bad. Sorry. Then, but then what you have are essentially these boards and I call them dream boards, but really they're just boards and, and they're opportunities for you to post pictures and descriptions and, and, and text and links along with things that you like. So these are some of my boards. I have a shoe closet, my favorite shoes, dream worthy home, beautiful clothes, loveliness. I have actually like, I don't know, like 11 boards or something or 10 boards. But if you look at the at these things um, and, and you're thinking in terms of your Market America business, um, when you post a pair of shoes that you really like, you could post a link to your shop.com website, right? When you post an outfit that you like, you can post a link to the specific um, store page that you could buy this outfit on your shop.com website. Dreamworthy homes. It's like just a really great way to get people to determine their why. Like there's so many things that you could be doing with this. So you should be creating boards. You pin photos to your boards. You add links for where to buy. This is where the disconnect happens for most business owners, right? You need to include a link for where to buy the picture that you've just pinned to your board, right? It's like an online dream board or scrapbook, and it's a great way to share things that you like and to recommend. What's really nice about this is it's basically like um, everybody has a profile where they get to share products that they like and sell them and tell people where to buy them. Most people don't tell you where to buy them. They include you know, a link if it was already posted, but there's a really big opportunity to create sales. So you can do this even specifically for web centers, right? So this is the bottom parts of my boards. I have the do it yourself and events and parties, and then I have a web designs board. And so the web design board is featuring all of my web center uh, a bunch of my web center client designs um, and even some uh, design center samples from our design center that are not my clients, right? So I'm very careful to differentiate whether the design was done by us or the design was done by the design center. So let me show you what it looks like. So if I wanted to add a web design to my web design Pinterest board, I would go ahead and click add, add photo or add a pin, excuse me. I would browse my computer. I would choose which board I wanted to pin to, upload the picture, and then I would include a um, description. So here's the design that I uploaded. It's DSE or DS Interiors, and I, I included a very short description, lovely, simple design for, um, for an interior designer, uh, www.newrealitywebsolutions.com. And that just lets anybody know that if they found this design and they're looking for a web designer, um, they can they can reach me at this website but like think about this if i had posted um these designs 
but I didn't include my website, how does that help my business? It doesn't, right? So it's really important to include the linkage. Here's another example. You can repin things on um, boards as well, kind of like retweeting with Twitter. So here I repinned Lauren Reidinger's um, photo of Amber Reidinger and I included uh, my own my own comment or my own um, yeah my own comment here. So um, it's her says Amber's red lips and ballerina bun and I wrote get the look or go to motives.marketamerica.com forward slash new reality to get the look. So what that does is that any I repinned this awesome picture of Amber to my page and I let people know that they can buy the red lipstick that she's wearing at my Motives Cosmetics page. Again, you want to add links for people to buy. This was repinned from Lauren Reidinger. It was repinned to my hair and makeup board. I added my link to my Motives mini website to get it with the phrase, get the look. So this is an actual call to action, just like I did here um, with my web center, with my website board. It's a really, really great opportunity to not only share things that we like, but teach people where they can get the information, get more information or buy the product. Instagram. Instagram is another photo driven, um, uh, social media platform. It used to be its own business and it's now owned by Facebook. Again, it's supposed, it's very picture driven. It's very viral. What people do with Instagram is they upload pictures of things and products that they like to generate interest. You can tag people and you can hashtag on Instagram very similarly to Twitter as well. And again, pictures create interest. So take a look. This is on um, my Instagram page. It's Sarah Rose 5683. And here's that picture that I put on Facebook. It's also on my Twitter. And if you notice here, I do a lot of pictures of nails, right? And these are all just manicures that I've had done. When I go to the nail salon, I bring my own nail polish and it totally opens um, the door to have conversation. Of, um, I, I get a lot of comments about my nails. So I tell people where to buy it or I get people saying, that's really cute. What color is it or what brand or whatever? You get people that ask these kinds of questions. Now, this is my, I use Instagram more for um, personal prospecting than I do for web centers. So my specific pay, uh, pictures are geared toward things that I personally like. Um, but you could use this in a business, um, a web center aspect as well. I could use it the same way that I use um, my web design board in Pinterest, if that makes sense. It's, a, it's just, again, personal branding. What you want to do on each of these platforms needs to be very clear. Right. So in, in my particular case, I like to post things about my family, my friends. I demonstrate lifestyle on my Instagram and I show uh, like things that I love. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is uh, is, a, is the professional networking, social networking, meaning it's a great place for uh, professional branding to uh, connect with other professionals to um search for people that are looking for specific services or looking to hire for specific jobs or things like that. Um, so take a look. This is the, this is my LinkedIn page. Um, if you go here, you can see that, uh, this is my, I have my name. I have my, my professional photo. I have my title, um, where I'm living, what I specialize in. And I've also been endorsed. I've been endorsed for social media, online advertising, social networking, online marketing, and social media, which is really great. So I can choose to add those endorsements or skip them or, or bypass them or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things about this as well. Let me get a little bit more specific. Um, again, it's an opportunity for you to connect professionally with other professionals. You can search for services or people and people and services can search for you. So if you are a business owner or a restaurant owner and you're looking for a great web development company, you might go to LinkedIn and, ser and search in the search bar right here for web developing or web marketing or online advertising. And because I am endorsed and because I choose, I have, a uh, tagged, you know, these as my specialties, I could show up in the search results for that person that was looking for web marketing or web development, right? The only way that this can happen, though, is if you actually have a completed profile, meaning a nice picture, and then all of these areas filled out. So I have my education, I have my experience, I have some honors and awards, and I have all of that great stuff. Um, LinkedIn is a great place to give and get referrals, and it's a great place to give and get endorsements as well. All right. So those are the top five social media platforms. I want to now switch gears and talk a little bit about blogging. Um, blogging is is a great way to establish yourself as an expert in a specific in a specific area. 
right? So I want to talk about, uh, we have two blogs that we've been very successful with using and, it, and it's generating a lot of leads for us. The first blog is, um, oh, before I tell you what the two blogs are, I want to let you know that when you blog for professional purposes, it's really important to have some one underlying um, topic that everybody, you know, that's, that's uh, consistent. Meaning on, my, on one blog, you don't want to be, you know, blogging about manicures and web design. Right, you want to keep the topics all somewhat related and in the same family. So for this particular blog, the stackgrp.com, our our stack group blog, it's all about um, generating interest and generating prospects for our Market America business. Right, so we talk about business building and entrepreneurial spirited things and um, building wealth and um, and building and you know all of that kind of stuff so you can see here the last uh, post was March 11th wealthy inequality in America video what this really means and it's a video that we watched and we like blog a little bit about what we thought about the video and then over here on the corner you can say it says the stack group Ryan stack and Sarah Rose stack internet entrepreneurs teaching people how to create their own sub economy and earn money back on every dollar that they spend so this is this is one way that we have established ourselves as um, um, you know, a solution for a problem, which is under an unemployed America, right? So this is one blog. I also have a blog for my web center business, all right? New reality web solutions, online solution tips and marketing strategies, right? So here's a design that we've done over here. It goes even five-year-olds know the golden rule and it's all about listening and, and, uh, and things like that. SEO tips, building community and loyalty in your brand. All of this stuff is online marketing and um, web development kinds of strategies. So um, I recommend using the Google Blogger because it's just really great. It's easy to use. Um, so if you go to blogspot.com, B-L-O-G-S-P-O-T.com or blogger.com, you can start a blog for free and it's hosted for free. And it's a great way to establish yourself as a professional and to create interest and um, to, to, send, you know, to, to share content as well. So in in all what kinds of things should you be posting on your blog on facebook on twitter on pinterest on instagram um in all of your social media outlets well if you're talking about your personal profiles number one rule have a complete profile number two rule have a nice profile pic number three 80 20 rule remember 80 percent personal 20 percent business you want to post exciting news shareable content via our other uh, professional websites, which we'll get to. Media-rich content, which generates interest. And a very important step not to skip, responses to other people's posts. So if you see a friend complaining about, uh, you know, aches and pains, you know, offer a solution. If you see a friend started a cupcake business, ask them if, they, if they've thought about a website yet. If you see a friend that just got laid off, ask them what they're doing in the intern. You know what I mean? You, you have to remember not only to think of it as a place for you to shout from the rooftops all the great things that you have, but also a platform for you to respond to other people and to engage in other people's stated excitements and challenges as well. Um, with business profiles, again, complete profiles. So the two business profile samples that I gave you were my business Facebook page and my business blogs that I have. A logo, content to establish you as a professional, exciting news, shareable content that you've, you've shared via our professional sites, media-rich content, responses to other people's posts. There's no real difference other than business profiles should be 100% business related and personal profiles should only be 20% business related in my opinion. So let's talk about that shareable content. If you're looking for ideas for content to share, you can create your own content for sure. But another thing that you can do is share content that exists already. That's great content. You can share designs uh, from our design center, statistics, articles, and more by sharing content from MA Web Center social media platforms. You can share it on both your personal profiles or your business profiles. So if you're brand new and you're a new web center owner and you want to share a design by our design center, that's okay. You can do that on your personal profile page. You don't have to have a web center specific um, business page. You can share a design on your personal page and say, wow, check out the work by our design center. What a great team we have over there. Something like that. Make the content relevant to you and your approach. So it's really important that when you're sharing content from third party sites, that you also add your uh, your little two cents in so that it's actually you know more personal and it's not just you randomly posting links. 
It's sort of like sharing a testimonial, a news article, or any other product that you would share on Facebook. So take a look. Shareable content from MA Web Center's Facebook page. Go to facebook.com forward slash official MA Web Centers. This is what it looks like. You can see here, this is the screenshot from today that I was announcing when we were talking about social media. And you can see here in the corner, these are some designs that were posted that were shared a ton of times. Um, let's see, hold on. So very, very cool. So anyway, so here's a design um, sample. And so if I were to share this design on my personal page, I could do that. Or I could even share this on my business page and say, check out this awesome design done by our awesome design center over with MA Web Centers. All right, take a look. Here's another design that was shared. Um, here's some specific things that you can try. You could try saying something like, well, take a look at this design by, done by our design center know anybody that could benefit from a better website. Now, this is a really effective way to share design because um, it's number one, accompanied by a photo, which is media rich, which is gonna generate interest, and number two, it ends in a question. Um, it ends in a call to action. So it's letting people know like, you don't want them to just look at it, you want them to think about, do they know anybody else that could benefit from a better website? Or you could say something like, the company I work with has an entire division that helps businesses leverage the internet. What do you think of this design? So this kind of flips it around. Um, this one asks for um, people to give you a referral for someone that needs a website. This one asks for an opinion, but it also states that this is what you do, that you work with a company that ha helps people leverage um, the internet. And then it asks for the design. So it's important to kind of do a little bit of both and not like just sell. And that's why we, we want to make sure that we're, it's a, it's a balanced thing. You want to generate interest, but you still need to ask the question so that you have results that are coming from the sharing of these designs. Um, some very basic other tips. Number one, be consistent with your approach. Edify the design center. Do not say, hey, check out this design that I did for my client. You didn't do it. If you did the do the design, that's one thing, but make sure that you're edifying the design center. And then a question or a call to action. You can also share these designs with specific people. Uh, use more of a one-on-one -on -one approach. So for example, if you know, um, you know a contractor or a person that works for a roofing company, share this design with them and be like, hey, check out this awesome design done by our design center. What do you think? Do you guys have a website for your home improvement company? You know what I mean? So that's a more one-on-one -on -one way to share these designs um, or the same thing with a salon or whatever. Take a look at that one. Spring is almost here. Know any contractors who could benefit from a better website? Check out this one done by our design center, right? 40 people like it, 25 shares. Very nice. Cool. More shareable content. Um, so these are websites that are cons or, uh, consumer driven. So MA Web Centers is a B2B business, business to business, right? We sell to business owners. We have multiple websites and uh, these specific websites are geared toward our clients. So mawebcenters.com is a um, an overview of what MA Web Centers is, what our product is, what you what kinds of services that we offer, um, and and testimonials and things like that. masamples.com is is a great place to send people that are like, I just want to see samples of your work. Well, this is a great place to send them because it's all samples of our design center. You can share links on these pages. You can share samples from these pages. You can you can share content and text from these pages on your own personal pages as well. The MA Web Center's blog. Um, so this is this is a great place to get ideas for content. Um, you wouldn't want to send your customers here, but you could totally um, you know take some of these these articles and update them on your own blogs or in your own social media platforms. Like for example, this one is a new upgrades for web center clients, right? So right here, there's a little bit about all the upcoming upgrades that are coming. So if you're looking for some really cool um, update announcements that you could post on your own web center blog or your own web center social media platforms, check out the MA Web Center's blog and see if there's any content that you can steal from us to use for yourself. More shareable content. Make sure to read articles from third-party sites before you share them. Very, very important. You don't want to be sharing um, articles that promote random products and services, okay? Now, these ones that you see here are Market America or Shop.com approved, you know, or our own websites like the blog.marketamerica.com, Facebook.com forward slash Market America, MAWebCenters.com, MAsamples.com, Shop.com, JR and Lauren on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and their personal blogs, right? Other favorites are Success Magazine or Success.com, GrantCardone.com, I love website magazine.com. 
CNN.com has a tech section. And again, when you're looking at these kinds of websites at the bottom, they have a lot of articles and they have a lot of things that might even just give you inspiration to blog about um, or to share content about. Um, but just make sure if you're going to actually share links to articles on these pages that you're reading them first, especially like website magazine, because they sell ads to all kinds of other web solutions. So I mostly use websitemagazine.com for ideas for things to blog about. So social media is just the beginning, right? We still have to qualify our prospects, right? We still have to book appointments. We can't just interact and randomly talk to people on social media. We have to make sure that we're moving the conversation to where we need it to go so that we can be doing result producing activities on social media, right? The goal is not to just be busy and to be present on social media. We want to be interacting. We want to be engaging. We want to be network marketing or social networking and, and, and actually getting somewhere, right? So we still have to set appointments for website sales. We still have to show plans. We still have to create customers on shop.com. And one of the ways that I'm going to, I'm going to recommend that you do this is you can send them through your distributor recruiting site as a better look into what you do. Right. So if you go back and we think about like in the very beginning, some of the stuff that we were posting about lifestyle right on our personal pages showing, um, you know, having Starbucks at noon with your child or, um, th you know, out on vacation or whatever. And people ask you what you're doing or if you remember Josh, Josh was like, you know, talking about how he made that nine hundred dollar check and he's so excited about where his business is going. And people are like, tell me more. Or Aaron Smith. Same thing. I just made twelve hundred bucks in a week. That's crazy. Tell me more. Well, what do you, where do you do? Where do you send them, right? So what about your distributor recruiting site? Have you ever had somebody ask you what you do, right? Have you ever had someone finally bites and they finally ask that question and they want to know more about the opportunity, right? Or they want you to send them some more information. They want to send you, they want you to send them information or something so that they can do some research. Um, are you social searching? Where do you send the interested prospects that you get when you're social searching. Um, want an easy solution for recommending a solution with people, uh, for people that hashtag, I hate my job, <laughs> right? The fact is, is that we put all this effort into prospecting with social media, but we have to have a way to close the deal, to tie it up. And that's where uh, distributor recruiting sites comes in really, really handy. So you can get a distributor recruiting site by going to exploreMA.com. And just a really quick, I'm not going to get very in detail about the platform, but just understand this. This is an opportunity for you to have your own website that represents you as an unfranchised owner. It's built on the MA Web Center's powerful technology. It's completely customizable. It's a site to represent you as an unfranchised owner. It reflects you and your specialties and other resources that you like to use when you're prospecting. Um, it's an opportunity for you to capture interested folks in social media, and you can use your distributor recruiting site link when you're prospecting online. So let me get specific. Here's Ryan Stack. He was tweeting, and uh, this person said something. The Atlantic said something. And Ryan's response, uh, it's, there's actually a cut off part of the conversation, but it ultimately led to the stackgroup.blogsback.com. And, um, and that is our distributor recruiting site, which looks like this. So our distributor recruiting site, we customized it. Here it's the homepage, Market America facts, training, upcoming events, web center certification stuff, and contact us. This is who we are as unfranchised owners. These are all of our favorite resources, um, our specialties in the business, the things that we love. This is actually a really cool flash animation at the top that we, that we added. And then right over here, it's an opportunity to catch um, interested folks. Step one, watch the I'm an entrepreneur short version of the video. Two, if you want more information about our business, put your email here and then um, and click submit and you'll be able to watch the overview. And then, oops, excuse me. And then over here, you could see, are you an entrepreneur? We have the perfect business system for you. Create your own economy, a little bit about who we are. So it's still personal, right? So it's really cool that when we're on, um, when we're on Twitter and we're, we're searching for people that are hashtagging things like, I hate my job, we can send them to our distributor recruiting site. And it's really, really a nice, neatly packaged way for us to offer information to people that are looking for it. By the way, you can do that with your, with your web center as well. So let me give you a quick recap. Social media. Number one, create personal profiles for yourself on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and if you can, have a blog. All right? Number two, create business profiles or at least boards on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Three, have complete profiles. 
you will not get the results you're looking for if you don't have profile pictures and about us sections and um, bios and, and, and websites and email address and contact information. It's very important to have a complete profile for personal and professional branding. Share content that creates interest. Don't sell online, share stories, share content, get the conversation started. Search for people and offer a solution. Respond to posts by others, friends, hashtags, all of those things and offer a solution. Leverage your distributor recruiting site to maximize your follow-up for prospecting. And in a nutshell, if you're still confused about what the difference is between some of the things we've talked about, I love this, like, um, this graphic. It totally makes it simple. Twitter, I am eating a donut. Facebook, I like donuts. Foursquare, this is where I eat donuts. Instagram, here's a photo of a vintage donut. YouTube, watch me eating a donut. LinkedIn, my skills include donut eating. Pinterest, here's a recipe for donuts. Last at FM, I'm listening to donuts. Google Plus, I'm a Google employee who eats donuts, meaning nobody uses Google Plus. Anyway, um, I'm doing, I like, I'm here. Here's a picture. Watch me, professional skills. This is what it's all about, and I am listening. Oh, and by the way, all MA Web Center's support staff have been trained on how to support your clients with their own social media questions and efforts. So all of the stuff that we've just talked about, um, the MA Web Center staff, support staff, they're aware of that. All clients are also emailed a PDF, which overviews the different social media platforms that exist and how that they can get free help by contacting customer care. All clients' websites are social media ready, not only to feature feeds, but share and like um, so that their content can be shareable, right? Also, your clients have social media management systems built right into their administration. This is what the PDF looks like that gets emailed to all of our clients when they buy a website. It talks about the different social media platforms that are out there um, and what's what makes them different and how they should be plugging in. And then at the very, very end, it says, and by the way, you don't have to figure this out on your own. All you've got to do is call into customer care, press one for English, four for technical support, and six to be connected with a social media marketing specialist, which is really, really great. So that's everything for tonight. I know it was a ton of information, um, but I hope that it was helpful. Tomorrow I'm going to be uploading the video from this webinar tonight along with the PowerPoint presentation. So if you'd like to review anything or go back and, and get some ideas, you're more than welcome to do that. Just remember all you've got to do is go to mawc411.com click on training and support, and then scroll down to webinars and you'll be able to see it there. So I want to thank everybody for coming tonight and I'm going to go ahead and start answering questions.